we're gonna have a lot of fun today so I am gonna try and um, pack this time full of jewelry making hi Julie <laughs> oh Lois okay it was an accident with the angry face it's funny okay so today we're gonna be making um, three pieces hopefully hi Angie um, and uh, the first two pieces we're going to make our bracelets um, I'm gonna put these two color trends aside the first bracelet we're going to make today is going to be using the, the sunset goddess mix from color trends and some of the um, raspberry sorbet fiber chain isn't this color amazing hi Lizzie hi everyone so hi Karen from Minnesota um, okay so I'm gonna dump out some of our beads and I'm also going to be using um, some beading wire for the first one some beetle on 19 strand gold and oh, hi Ala and then some bead uh, crimp beads um, I also grabbed just a random toggle clasp from my stash and some jump rings hey Katie so our first bracelet is going to be actually I think both bracelets are going to be pretty easy but it's going to make a, a huge impact and um, so I'm going to if you need um, a ruler that's fine I'm going to measure out three inches of my fiber chain sorry my my uh, ruler is hot glue all over it from my last project for dress it up beads so I am going to measure out about three inches of fiber chain and then um, I'm gonna so this will be the middle one and then I'm just gonna double it so there we go and I'm just going to cut this one right here uh, you want to have some really good scissors for this because there is a lot going on in this fiber chain there are a lot of layers there so I'm going to set this aside because we will be using more of that for our second bracelet. And I am going to take my bead stringing wire. We'll probably only need about, probably not even 10 inches of this. I'm going to snip some bead stringing wire. Put on one of my crimp beads. And I'll need another one for later. String on a crimp bead. And I'm gonna try and find that center link. Yep, there we go. Go through our center link, come back through our crimp bead. And I am just gonna flat crimp this because this isn't a very gonna be a very heavy bracelet. It's not gonna this joint really isn't gonna get that much wear and tear. So I'm just gonna flat crimp here with my crimping pliers. Just make sure that your wire isn't crossed. So I'm just gonna do that. Make sure my wire isn't crossed. And flat crimp. So there we go. Now I'm going to start stringing some beads on. I'm just going to start, oops, actually, instead of just stringing, I'm going to kind of put them in an order. I decided the order before um, I started the video, but you can obviously design in any order, any order you'd like. Go, I love this bead. He's going to be the focal. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all those different colors in there. Then I am going to take some uh, bead caps and make a bead cage for this bead. Hi, Carolyn. Um, we're going to take a crystal rondelle. Another one of these guys. This really pretty oval in orange. A lotus bead. Isn't that kind of cool? You can use it as a bead cap. You can use it... Um, just as a regular bead where is what I'm going to use it for today and then this really fun uh, it's like it's a hexagon but it's not really in the traditional hexagon shape 
Um, and then a couple more bead caps for one of these crackle beads. Hi, Melanie. And then to finish it off, I'm going to grab another one of these crystal ball beads. So I'm just going to uh, quickly put our beads onto our wire and I'm going to feed through the, that tail through the first couple beads. It's not needed. You could just trim that off right at the crimp bead if you don't want to do that. And then I'm going to keep going down. I just love this bead. It makes me, kind of hypnotizes me a little bit <laughs> every time I look at it. Yeah, the bright colors are amazing, aren't they, Melanie? Yeah, I think so too, Lisa. Oop. They definitely look like a sunset to me. Okay. I love how these uh, filigree bead caps kind of make that look like it's a bead cage. And just fit it around your bead there. Move it down. guess I could get my ruler out of here. Okay, we have just a couple more to go. I mean, this bracelet, it's really going to make an impact, but it's really pretty easy to put together. I always ask this, what's everybody making for dinner or what did you have for dinner today? It's a hundred and, well the last time I checked it was 107 degrees here so um, I don't think I'm going to make anything elaborate for dinner. <laughs> uh, okay and then so here is the um, strand of beads that I came up with for my bracelet. And oh you're in Australia Catherine and she said it's it's winter morning there. Katie's having taco, tacos. Okay, and then here I'm just going to finish this half of the bracelet by stringing on my crimp bead, half of my um, clasp. You can use any kind of clasp you want. It doesn't have to be a toggle. Toggles are just my favorite for bracelets because they're easier for me to do one-handed. Um, all is having a bowl of cereal. What kind of cereal? Um, or magnetic could also work one-handed. Um, if you're really good, you can do um, a uh, button clasp or um, even a, a lobster clasp if you can do them two-handed. Okay, so I have that strung. I'm gonna bring this down through a couple of beads. Yeah, my dinner's good. Uh, somebody said tacos sound great. I am waffling between a taco bowl and some spaghetti. <laughs> So, oh, and while I'm talking, I kind of wasn't paying attention, so let's stir that over. I hope anybody who's in the Louisiana area is safe. I heard um, Ida made uh, landfall today. hope everybody's staying safe down there, or over there, I should say, because I'm south as well. Okay, so I'm gonna put that through one more bead like that and then just pull. But I don't want to crimp, flat crimp while it's in a straight line because it won't bend around my wrist well. And then I'm just gonna tighten that a little bit more, make sure this is a little loosey-goosey here. And we will go ahead and flat crimp. And if you'd like, you can add um, a crimp cover. I'm not gonna do that because it's not, you can't really even see and it kind of just looks like a regular bead. So then I am going to snip as closely as possible to my bead without getting my main strand. And this one I actually tucked into those beads pretty well so I don't need to snip. Now I'm going to take a jump ring so we can attach our second piece of our clasp. 
I'm always asked what kind of pliers these are. Ooh, Panda Express. I had uh, Chinese the other day. That was really good. <laughs> Panda Express is yummy. Um, so I'm going to open up my um, jump ring, but everybody always asks. These are Beetle on multi pliers. I love them. They're just, they're so handy. I don't need six different pliers. I just have my two. And then I'm going to do this, put my um, class, or I'm sorry, my jump ring around two pieces of the fiber chain, grab the end of my clasp and close this up. It is quite crowded there, so you might have to do some finagling. There we go. Oops, like I said, it's a little crowded, so. There we go. Got that closed. And here's our first bracelet. Isn't that gorgeous? The way I would wear this is with the clasp in the front so you can see both sides of the bracelet. But either way is perfect, right? So I don't know, I don't think you could see my wrist, but I was, I was wearing a spoiler. <laughs> I made it today in different colors from all Jesse James beads that I had just laying around from uh, prior projects. So this is the second bracelet we're gonna be making today. So there's the first one. Isn't that so cute? And it's vibrant and it's perfect. This is like the perfect transition into fall, I think, because it's got your orange, but you're still a little bit summery with the bright pink. So I'm glad you guys like it. Okay, so that's number one. Can you believe we already made a piece of jewelry and we're only 12 minutes in? <laughs> okay, so the next one we're going to make will be a stretch bracelet. So thank you, Letitia. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Um, I have some elasticity. You can use um, 8.8 millimeter is my go-to, but I only had one millimeter on hand, which is perfectly fine. They fit through most of Jesse James beads uh, pretty well. Um, I am going to just kind of lay out my design first, but um, we're also going to be using the fiber chain as beads in this bracelet, not as chain. Thanks, Melanie. I'm so glad you like it. Um, so we're going to be using this as uh, beads today and not chain for this second bracelet. What I did was cut several lengths into four uh, link pieces. So I have mm, one, two, three, I have four of them. And I'm also going to be using the, um, along with the Sunset Goddess today, I'm gonna um, borrow a couple beads from the Illuminating uh, Color Trends Mix, which is just a fantastic array of yellows and silvers. And I'm also gonna grab a couple beads from the smoke and mirrors mix which is hiding from me oh here it is so um really really nice gray mix i'm just using some yellow beads and some antique brass beads from those mixes so here is what i'm adding to the other beads that we're already using today let me get this wire out of here yeah the fiber chain is really nice done Okay, so I'm gonna put that there and we're just gonna do the same thing, kind of just lay out a design. So I have one of these fire polish looking beads. Um, I'm gonna put some chain here and it might look random to you, but it's gonna look like a really cool, fun mix of these colors once we have everything together. I love this cube, isn't that kind of cool? I love those. What is nine? Um, I, I don't know the com uh, the conversion of Celsius to Fahrenheit. Catherine said it's nine degrees Celsius there. If somebody can do the math for me, that would be great. <laughs> She's in Australia. Okay, so I'm going to incorporate some of the antique brass and kind of just keep going. We'll put another section of chain here. Put some crystals. And then we'll use this guy again. Oh, doesn't that make your eyes just wide, uh, go absolutely wide? I love it. Love it. And then we'll do another piece of chain. I'm kind of going off the 
the side of my mat here. 48 degrees. Oh, that is cold. Oh, that's cold, especially for Arizona. Whew. It's a bad day when it gets to 48 degrees in Arizona. <laughs> so we'll just keep kind of designing and you can do them obviously in any order you please with any beads you please. Okay. And I'm kind of running out of room on my mat, so I'm just going to finish the design on the second, uh, like on a second line here. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Use one of these. I like using a mix of the crystals, the glass beads, and the metal. Um, and then I'm just going to use these and this. So pretty easy, but the big thing here is we're using the chain as a different type of design element. So I'm going to take my elastic cord, BLN elastic cord, and I'm just going to string. And it's probably going to be boring for you guys, but um, to string the chain like a, a bead, we're just going to go through each individual link. And it's going to be a little haphazard. Um, and absolutely this works with metal chain as well. So it looks just like a little knot of fabric. I love it. Right up against our bead, a happy little pop of color. And then we're just going to keep going. Hi Catherine. And then we're coming to another one. Thanks Katie. And just, I, I know some of you, your brains are just kind of going like, oh, how much chain do I have and how many bracelets can I get it on to? <laughs> but it, you don't, you can use this in any kind of design. You can make a pair of earrings like this. You can make a pair, a necklace, whatever you like. Any type of chain. I know um, Jesse James Beads also has uh, a lot of the capture, not capture chain, excuse me, the um, uh, chain reaction. You could do that with this. Oh, we might have an issue here with these bead caps. There we go. Just pile those beads on. I love that guy. It's so pretty. I want a whole strand of those. <laughs> we'll do some more chain. Yes, uh, um, Jesse James Beads does have a lot of acrylic chain and really fantastic fun colors. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Okay, then we just have a few more. And what I might do, since since this um, elastic cord is a little thicker than I normally use, I might put the end of the bracelet, or have the end be this little chunky piece of chain so I can hide the, the knot within that. Um, I'm not sure uh, the knot with this thick of elastic cord will fit into one of the other beads, but we'll work it out. Okay. Hey. Oops. Alrighty. So I'll work that down. And uh, I want to trim my elastic cord. And I am actually, just because I'm not sure that the, the, this hole will hold a, a knot from one millimeter elastic cord. I'm just going to slip that on this side so we can potentially slide the knot inside these beads. Um, and then we always want to pre-stretch a stretch bracelet. Um, stretch cord will stretch out over time and if you pre-stretch it you don't have to worry about it. We'll go ahead and do a knot. Um, yeah, it is like a fall fiesta. Thanks, Marisol. Um, so there are several different ways you can knot a stretch bracelet. I just do three knots right on top of each other like this one two and three 
and then make sure it's really tight. I use GS Hypo Cement. You can use several other um, types of glue. Uh, this is just, it, this is the best glue that I've ever used for um, stretch bracelets. I use it on every single stretch bracelet. Then we'll just drop a drop of glue on both sides of that knot. Let that sit for about five minutes and then I'll come back and trim that in just a moment. I'm sorry, I'm cl closing my glue. If, if you don't do it right away, it'll leak everywhere. I'm going to set that aside with our other bracelet, but isn't it really pretty? Isn't it fun having that fabric on there? using different types of textures to make a really fun transition piece. I love this bracelet. <laughs> I would wear this year round for sure. All right, so we'll come back and trim that off and I'll show you it in just a moment. So we're 20 minutes in. We still, I, I budgeted a half hour for that. So now we're gonna make a necklace. And this one maybe isn't that innovative, but it's just gonna be a lot of fun. And um, I'm gonna kind of move these beads off because we're going to be using the Smoke and Mirrors color trend set now and the Gunmetal Roses. So here's the red set, which is Gunmetal Roses. Thank you, Deb, that's so sweet. I'm gonna set that off over here. And then um, I keep losing the, the gray one. <laughs> and then I'll put the gray on this side. Okay. So these are really fun colors. So I'm from Ohio and the Ohio state colors are scarlet and gray. So I think this is kind of like an homage to my old state. <laughs> um, we're gonna make a pendant and then we'll just do a really fun, easy necklace uh, for the rest of the necklace. So for the pendant, I'm going to use this um, pretty fun feather dustery looking um, tassel. Okay, put that guy there. Um, I have some 20 gauge wire that we're going to be using. Hi from Detroit. Hi, Brooke. I'm glad, to, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Um, and then we will be using this guy. Isn't that fun? That's a really pretty shape that I haven't seen very often. Um, we're gonna use this guy, which is a really another different shape. It's not quite round and it's not quite a rondelle. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining. And then I am also going to grab the larger, there are two sizes of rows in here, but I am going to grab the larger one. And then um, I'm going to put it like that. So uh, I also have some 20 gauge wire. I always cut way too much, but that's okay. And I am going to make a, um, a loop. And it's not going to be a simple loop. It's going to be a, a, a wrapped loop. So I'm just going to grab the wire between my two uh, plier uh, pieces there and kind of do a little loop like that. Okay. I'm going to hold it like that. Take my tail and just wire wrap a couple times around the longer tail. Okay. Then I am going to snip as closely as possible and chuck the tail in the trash. Yeah, I cut this way too long, <laughs> but that's okay. We'll just cut it off. And then uh, I'm going to feed on my uh, first crystal, my second crystal, and then my flower. And I want the flower, flowers kind of drilled through the sides, but I want the bottom to go that way. Okay, we're gonna slide that down. Just like that. And we'll kind of just move our wire to be the shape that we want it. Okay, so there's part of our, our pendant. And I'll straighten this up in just a moment. And then we'll go ahead and do a wire wrapped loop at the top. Just like the bottom. And don't worry, that that flower is gonna move around for the first couple seconds, and then we'll, once we start wire wrapping him, he'll he'll stay in place, okay? So then we're gonna start wire wrapping. Just a little bit, and you can hold it um, while it's on your mandrel of your pliers, or you can grab that uh, loop 
with your other set of pliers, which is what I prefer to do. And then we're just gonna keep wrapping until I'm satisfied with um, how it looks and maybe so the rose isn't moving around as much. Oh, moving some beads there. These. So we just keep going, just keep going. If you want a lot of wire on there, that's totally fine. I think I'm gonna go a couple more times. There we go. All right, that looks good. And then I'm just going to snip and bring it back a little bit more and then snip it. Okay, and he doesn't need to be tucked in. So this is where you wanna kind of just move it to the way you'd like it to be. I want the loop facing forward like that. And I actually want the bottom loop to be facing forward like that too. So I'm just gonna kind of twist it, but he's a little wonky. There we go. Okay, so there is part of our pendant. We'll put that like that and I'm gonna grab two jump rings. Now, if you want to wire wrap your pendant, your pendant to your tassel, that's fine. I just didn't really like how that was looking when I tried it before. Okay. Open our jump ring. Yes, wonky is a technical term. I use it about 16 times a day for sure. <laughs> and then we're making a Y necklace today. So I'm gonna take this piece that was also in um, the, uh, the kit or the, the mix and I'm just going to put that on too. So there's our pendant. Isn't that pretty? There's our pendant. I'm gonna set that aside for just a moment. And then we're just gonna make, we're going to um, just do a quick little necklace going up the sides. So I'm gonna put these beads here. And then I'm going to put the red beads here. And we'll just kind of design, we'll just design a little necklace. It doesn't have to be rocket science because Jesse James Beads did the hard part for us. They, they picked out beads that looked fantastic together. So we're going to be um, kind of just putting some gray and red together. All right, so I want these to be leading down to our little Y component. Um, I got this on Etsy. The bead mat is from Etsy. Um, I cannot remember who the seller was at this point. But we'll go ahead and just kind of put some... I'm just going to go... You could do color blocking, like a few red, then a few gray. Um, we could do... Uh, every other, which is what I'm probably going to be doing here. You can do it one side red, one side gray, whatever works for you. I like these. These are large hole beads. You could fit leather inside of those. Don't those look like kind of like futuristic? They look like space, futuristic spaceships to me. Okay. Some more of these in. Let's get some crystal rondelles in there. Um, I think we're gonna put some flowers. Mm. Look at these beads, these are really fun. They're like table cut 
with a little bit of um, stardust on them. They're really neat. There's something behind here. Okay. Um, put some bicones. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Marisol said they look like something from the, the, the movie Inception. Absolutely. Um, look at these. Aren't these fantastic? They're a couple different grays all mixed in with, with an, a luster. So yummy. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to try and lift this up a little bit. There you go. And let's do a couple more of these barrels. And some, these are matte. Put those back here. Uh, more bicones. Sorry, I'm going out of screen, but um, it's only so large. <laughs> and I'm just trying to use as many as possible glad you guys are liking the color combo. I think it's a lot. It, this is definitely a good fall color combo, which is coming up more quickly than I want it to <laughs> because I love, love, love summer. All right. We'll put a couple of these in there and I think we're good to go because I'm also going to be using chain in the back. So I, I don't want to use too much. Um, so I am going to, and I, I pulled out some, um, some crimp beads but oh here they are I'm gonna grab a crimp bead or a couple crimp beads and then I am going to find my pendant that we just made and I'm going to crimp one side or this side on right now so I'm gonna scooch in a little bit more so we can get a little bit closer and see what everything looks like and uh, I have some silver why a uh, beetle, beetle on 49 strand I didn't have anything that was lower strand you don't need 49 strand you could use 19 um, but I didn't have any in silver that was any lower than that um, and I am just going to put a crimp bead on oh yeah this would look good for Christmas uh, Leticia said she saw Christmas when she looks at it and I am going to put a crimp bead And I'm actually not going to crimp it right on. Well, actually, that's probably a bad idea. I'm going to crimp it right back onto here. Sometimes we make decisions on the fly. <laughs> um, I am probably going to folded crimp these so I could put a crimp cover on them because they're a little bit bigger than our last bead. Hi, Sharice. Thanks for joining us. And um, I have crimp bead covers in silver available. So, Sharice, make sure you watch the, the replay because I made two bracelets already. <laughs> All right, so um, in my crimping pliers, there's a large valley and then they get progressively smaller. We want to put that um, crimp bead in that first largest valley towards the end of the crimp or the beginning of the crimp. I don't know where or the, the pliers. Make sure your crimp uh, pliers are, I'm sorry, your wires are not crossed. And then we'll fold in the middle just like that. We'll turn it 90 degrees and make sure our pendant isn't in the way. And then we'll crimp again. Oh. And then we'll kind of do it one more time. Maybe that wasn't the best crimp, but it, it worked. It worked. And then I am going to cut my wire. Normally I, I strand onto the spool just so I don't waste wire, but today I wanted to crimp right onto there. Okay, and then we're just gonna go up our strand of beads that we laid out. Okay. Sorry I can't do this in fast forward. <laughs> Normally on my channel I would. Um, I just wanted to plug my, my YouTube channel. We hit 8,000 subscribers this week. I'm so excited. Um, every time I hit 1,000 subscribers, I do a giveaway and a live on my YouTube channel. Um, so uh, if you haven't already followed my, my channel, I would definitely uh, would love to have you as a subscriber and you could 
possibly win some some beads this weekend i'm going to a tucson bead show and i will be picking something up for the winner when i'm there just letting you know <laughs> All right, so we're coming to the end here. And you know what? I didn't use any of these bead caps. Oh well, we'll we'll get them in some other some other piece later on down the road. Um, and we can put a bead cap around there. Hello, everybody's joining. There we go. We got a bead cap in there. And then Okay. Oh, I think somebody said that they're going to the bead show. Let's see. Marisol, yes, I'm going to the Jogs bead show this coming weekend and then I'm going back for the other uh, shows the next weekend. So hopefully I can see someone there. All right, so we're moving this down. Like I said, this is probably gonna be a very long necklace, but I love long necklaces. I love, well, okay, let's, let's be honest. I love any kind of necklace. <laughs> Thank you, everybody's so sweet. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna kind of keep this loosey-goosey and then I have this awesome chain. It's, it's like three strands. I don't know if it's three strands or no, it's three strands. And then it's held together by some beads um, and through different segments. So I am going to slip a crimp bead on to my wire. And then um, this is where you want to bust out your uh, magnifying glass because these are so teeny tiny. I am going to go through each one of these little chains. So teeny tiny. You have to have patience, but they're so cute. Oh, well, we got two. We can get the third one. There we go. We did it. And then um, I'll come back down through my crimp bead. And I didn't use a, a jump ring here because the jump ring would have to be teeny, teeny, tiny to fit through that chain. I just don't think it would have worked very well. And then we're going to find, yeah, the chain really is rad. <laughs> so we're gonna find a bead, slide that on. And then I am just gonna pull my wire. Again, we wanna make sure this is not a straight line because it's not gonna flow correctly if it is. And I'm just gonna kinda pull that down. There we go. And then we will crimp. Turn that sideways. There we go. I am going to trim. There is gonna be a little bit of wiggle room. I didn't really check to see how loose it was. Um, I'm gonna cut off the extra tail here. But the good thing is when you do something like that and you have some extra room, you can always add more crimp covers. <laughs> That's what I always do. So I'm not going to worry about that until we're at the end um, like you can see where there's a couple, there's about a quarter inch, but that two crimp covers right there will be perfectly fine. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side of the necklace. I'm sorry, I've been missing what uh, you guys have been saying. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Uh, Marisol, I, on, I really only use crimp beads. I was never, I never really tried to use crimp tubes before. Not that I don't like them, I just haven't used them. Okay, so I have enough wire here to do the other side without cutting more so I'm just going to do the exact same thing so if you missed the first time you can watch this time okay 
I think I'm pressing my luck though. I've already done two crimps uh, live. <laughs> They're not the easiest thing to do live, that's for sure. Okay, we wanna make sure that our wires are not crossed. There we go. And there we go. And we'll just do the same thing up the other side. Now I did kind of mess up my um, my uh, design, but I can kind of just look at the side and figure out what I did before. <laughs> Marisol. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So. Next, I need this guy. And we'll just keep going. guys definitely got your money's worth today <laughs> we're making three full projects all right we just have a few more beads okay I need a bead cap And then the good thing is, if you really, really wanted to, there are tons of beads left from both mixes, so I could make a matching bracelet. Um, there are two mixes here, Sharice. We're using um, Smoke and Mirrors and Gunmetal Roses from um, Color Trends line. Um, and then in the first two bracelets, I used Sunset Goddess and Illuminating from the Color Trends line. And then we used a couple different types of chain. Okay, two more beads. There we go. Now, I just wanna make sure everything's laid out correctly. Okay, and make sure this comes over because I'm not putting a clasp on. So I wanna make sure that it doesn't like twist. And then I'm going to put a bead, a crimp bead on. Grab my teeny tiny chain. We'll go through each link. Thanks, Melanie. Yes, I, it I did kind of work a little fast, but the thing is I had these designed before I started filming, so that makes it go quickly, but because I feel like the design process is the hardest part. There we go. Whew. That uh, makes you sweat a little bit, those teeny tiny chains. Okay, we'll come back down through here. And I want to make sure that nothing is tangled, nothing is incorrect. This is the time to check your pattern. I, sometimes when I check the pattern, I still don't get it right, so <laughs> take your time. All right, so that's kind of outer screen. And then um, I'm just going to pull like we did on the last one, but I want to make sure that this is kind of loosey-goosey. Yeah, I'm telling my secrets. <laughs> Sometimes I design on the fly, though, for sure. I ha and I have during um, Jesse James Bead's uh, lives, but today I wanted to make sure we got all three projects in. All right, so we've got this last piece here. I'm going to crimp. Please be nice. <laughs> and I'm talking to the crimp bead and asking it to please be nice to me. Because sometimes they're not very nice. 
we're going to go ahead and fold and then fold again. So like I said, um, I'm going to definitely need to add in some crimp covers because you can see there's a gap here, but I didn't want to pull too hard. So crimp covers are the way to, to hide gaps. All right. So here's our necklace over the head necklace. Let me move out a little bit. There we go. So over the head necklace, there we go with some roses, some gunmetal roses. And I would say this is definitely an Ohio State themed necklace for sure. Um, and then I'm just going to find some crimp beads that I think will work. Isn't this a cool little case of crimp covers? So. And I just sometimes these are a little bit harder than crimping itself. I swear, sometimes they're just like, no, I don't want to go on, or I don't want to go on correctly. So you just have to finagle them. Oh, thank you, thank you. Everybody's so sweet. Um, this video will be available again on um, Jesse B James Beads page uh, as well as my YouTube eventually. I'll probably try and get it up there tonight. Crimp covers. Um, yeah, I've never tried putting um, crimp covers on crimp tubes. Phyllis said she can't get crimp covers on crimp tubes. I think I, don't, I haven't tried that before. Now, um, if you ever see a crimp cover that's just a little, it's closed too much, I just slide my uh, the point of my crimp pliers in there and then open up. So now it's wider. Okay. So I was having a little bit of trouble getting that guy on. Let me get it closed like that. So down there is fine. Now we have some room at the back. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to put two because sometimes you want some wiggle room so it doesn't just look too tight. Um, I'm going to put a bigger one on the back. There are several different sizes in here. Yeah, crimp, some some of you are saying the crimp tubes um, are a little frustrating sometimes. Yeah, that's probably one of the reasons why I haven't used them before. But for those of you who can use them really well, I, I definitely am a little envious. All right, so I'm going to just kind of close that on. Oh. And these, the bigger ones are going to need you to kind of just, just keep working it. Sometimes they don't close right the first time you can... Um, Move them down a little bit. Um, Julie says she only uses crimp tubes. Uh, she finds them more secure. I, I, like I said, I've never used one, so I don't know. Oh, we've got a little bit of an escapee there. Yeah, so we've got a, a, a mixed crowd saying they some do use tubes, some don't. Like I said, nothing's wrong. It's just more of a preference, I think. Okay. So I'm probably going to end up snipping this after I put one more crimp cover on. Aw, Katie, thank you. Okay, one more for the other side. And it just looks like a little silver bead that we used. There we go. All right, do I need to trim? Yes. Be very careful. Don't trim your main wire because I've done it on camera before. Okay. Our necklace is finished. Can you believe it? We made two bracelets and a necklace in 50 minutes, 47 minutes. What time was it? Oh, uh, yep. 50 minutes. So there we go. Isn't that cute?
we go. And then, oh, we, fi we finished this bracelet, but I forgot that we needed to wait for that glue to dry on this one. So let me trim it. And I am not going to think that this knot, well, yep, I can get the knot in that bead. We did it. Okay. So there are two matching bracelets. I'm definitely going to be wearing these all the time. Here are the two that I made earlier today. Yes, Julie's right. Julie said Brittany can buy beads this fast too. Brittany can buy all the beads this fast faster <laughs> so thank you so much for watching everyone uh, I had a lot of fun and now we have three new pieces of jewelry to just kind of hang out on my Sunday in because I'm gonna put these on and wear them around the house for the rest of the day so thanks so much for watching um, check out my YouTube channel it's turquoise.street on YouTube and then um, my bead group on Facebook which is Brittany's beads I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of their weekend bye bye Sweetie. Hi. Hi, cutie. My baby, huh? Yeah.